yet we are still out and about doing our thing making lessons and all that cool stuff but i've taken half an hour out from our busy filming schedule to join you today and help you with your thursday q a which is anything that you want to know as you try and improve as a DJ or a DJ producer, could be gear, could be music, could be techniques, could be playing out, could be promoting yourself. I'm here to help you for the next half hour or so uh, with any of that stuff. So it's kind of an open house here at Digital DJ Tips. Now, you know, we are, we've got 20, how many courses is it now? 24? 23, 24, we're making them all the time. We've got 24 on public sale, 24 big DJ courses that'll teach you everything from you know, just how to DJ on your phone at a party all the way to making a career of this. And of course we have digitaldjtips.com um, and we have the channels you're watching us on now. We have all that stuff. But these sessions are all about just throwing the doors open and chatting DJing for a bit. It's going to the pub after work and talking about what you really want to talk about. So that's what I'm here for anyway. If you are just joining us, then welcome. If you're watching the replay, the reason you're watching the replay is you probably weren't subscribed to the channel or you hadn't clicked like the page and you hadn't clicked notifications or show posts first so do that stuff and then next time you'll be able to join in live so hello everyone welcome i can see the comments are flying in thick and fast already remember this is about questions so i'd like your questions about your djing uh, mason says i'm a bit late than a bit i'm a bit late but better late than never actually you're not late and i need to apologize for us being late uh, as i say we're filming at the moment and uh, we just had a natural break in what we're doing so that was my chance to kind of run out and uh, start chatting to you guys and girls so frosty face beats says the new mark mix track platinum is it good for a beginner and for scratching uh so is the new mark mix track platinum good for a beginner yes it is it's a really great controller is it good for scratching yes you can scratch on it it's got for the size of the controller it's got really nice jog wheels make sure you get your settings right in your serato software make sure that you have your cross fader curve set to nice and sharp and uh, make sure you have the vinyl vinyl on so it's acting like a vinyl control and not like a CD control, which uh, there is a button to do that on that controller. But no, it's a very, very good little controller. And also as your beat maker, uh, Frosty Face Beats, uh, it's also got a sampler on it, which you can use either to give you loops to scratch over or to put samples on to kind of get your own beats uh, into there. So you could uh, have a lot of fun with that before you outgrow it. So yes, I, I would recommend thoroughly the Mixed Track Platinum for a beginner. doesn't matter if you're scratching, that's all good. Hello to my long-suffering wife at home there uh, in uh, a long, long way away. So hi, Faye. Uh, hello to Jamie watching in Marmaris. So uh, good to know you're having fun. Hopefully you're on holiday there in Turkey and not uh, not working, Jamie. Uh, so Ms. Trix Beats says, hey, hey to all you DJs and producers from Baltimore. Good to have you here, Ms. Trix Beats. Right, this is all about questions, people. So get your questions coming. A lot of you are looking forward to it, but it won't be much of a question show unless you ask them. Martin says, looking forward to a good show. I'm really liking how everyone helps each other and just hangs out and chats. This is what it's all about. You know, quite often I see in the comments, they come up on the right hand side of my screen here. Quite often I see you're just answering each other's questions, which is just what this is all about is a community, right? So Nigel says, uh, more than friends disc is in the background. Oh, where could we be? Keep thinking. Uh, how <laughs> DJ Mo says, hello, good day, Phil. Good day, DJ Mo. So what's the best way to run two programs synced to make beats along with DJing? For example, Serato and something else. Right, you wanna use, the easiest way of doing this is to use Ableton Link. Look into Ableton Link. Ableton Link is, a, is, a, is almost like a modern version of MIDI. It's a way for DJ software, production software, to talk to each other even with no wires, it can happen across the internet. So you could have a computer with Ableton on and another computer running DJ software, or on the, you know, you can link them on the same computer as well. So Ableton Link is probably the, the most elegant way to link together various bits of production software, even if they're running, as long as they're on the same network, even if they're running with different people on different computers. Have a look into that. Uh, Miss, uh, Miss Trick, Miss Beats, Miss Beats, I've got your name right now. I've worked out your spelling of that. Uh, and if it's not exactly what you want, then let us know in the comments. You're on YouTube. So if anyone else has got any ideas for Miss Beats over there on YouTube. Uh, where can we discuss our techniques with each other, says Ronald? Well, there's a couple of places. If you are a uh, fan of this website, fan of what we do, then go to Facebook and type Global DJ Network into Facebook and it will show you a group. You'll have to apply to join it, but it's free to join. But we do let people in individually to that group. That's where we've got about 10,000 DJs who are just like you, 
and you can share techniques, you can share wins, you can share frustrations, you can share tips. It really is a lovely closed community of people who are just looking out for each other um, and helping each other to kind of get where we all want to go. If you're one of our students, then you should be in Student Hub, which is our student only group. So if you're a student, you will know about Student Hub, uh, then that is a great place to discuss this kind of thing. So Aaron says uh, over on Facebook, I live in a small rural area and I need new ideas to kickstart the business a little due to the COVID-19 nonsense. Um, so loads of ideas for doing stuff when you can't play gigs. You know, the people who have worked hardest without gigs will be the one that get the gigs when it all comes back again. Because you can be working on live streaming, you can be working on your social media presence, you can be making mixes for people, you can be planning stuff with people for when everything opens again. If anyone else has got any other ideas though, for Aaron, Aaron is over there on Facebook and you can uh, share there as well. So here's an interesting one. This is from John, who says, should you play music that the crowd doesn't know? Well, that all depends on the gig that you're playing at, right, John? If you're playing at a wedding, or a event of some kind, people go to those places to hear music that they know, to bring back happy memories of times gone by as they share that event with people that are their friends and family right now. So that means you shouldn't play any music they don't know, ever. If you are booked to play an underground house club where you are a producer who is known for the sound that that club plays and everyone who goes there is coming out to hear new music, then of course you can play a lot of new music in your sets, although you probably have to play your hits as well. And between those two things is a whole gamut of how much do you play that people know, how much do you play that they don't, how much do you entertain, how much do you educate. And one of the biggest tips I can give you here is don't try challenging the crowd with stuff until you've got them on side. Play the stuff they want to hear first, give them what they think they want, and then give them what you know they need a little bit later on when you've got them on side. And if it's not working, pull back to what they know. Even the most cool underground clubs with the most open-minded guests will still play tracks people know to get an, a, a response. So you should definitely play tracks they know, and the amount you have to play, uh, you can get away with playing that they don't know, really depends on how well it's going and the kind of gig you've got. This question is from Blue Monday Beats, good name. My CD collection is my prized possession. However, a lot of my old CDs, when I written them to digital, don't have any key information. Most of them are like that. Any reason? Well, there's no key information stored with CDs. But as soon as you put your CDs into your DJ software and analyze them, the key should come up instantly. And if it doesn't, there's something wrong because there's no reason why that shouldn't happen. So use mixed in key if you've got it. It's the best way of getting key detection information with your files um, but otherwise the only reason this might not happen is if you're ripping them to WAV. If you're ripping them to WAV there is no place in a WAV file itself for key information to be stored. So what happens then sometimes is that DJ software will it will recognize the WAV file and it will store key information in its own database and put the two together when you're using the DJ software but of course that's not going to show anywhere else. So if you're ripping to WAV, just be aware that WAV cannot store title, artist, hour, mark, key, and all that stuff. Uh, but apart from that, you should be good to go there. Let us know uh, if you've got any more questions about that Blue Monday Beats over on YouTube. So Rishi says, I have a problem in Recordbox. You're going to have to tell us a bit more than that, Rishi, uh, for us to help you. Alex, I've been using the DDJ400 for several months now, but I want an upgrade. What are your thoughts on the DDJ1000? Uh, I use Recordbox. Thank you. I'm looking... Uh, DJ, DDJ 1000 right there. Yeah, you see that? Uh, we've been recording on a DDJ 1000 today. It's a great controller. It's a great step up from the DDJ 400. There's no point going from a DDJ 400 to another controller that's roughly the same price. You've got to take a step up or else stick with what you've got. And the DDJ 1000 for Recordbox is a great controller. If you'd rather use Serato, the DDJ 1000 SRT, both highly recommended, probably the highest selling four channel controllers for uh, respectively Recordbox and Serato out there. Uh, so you certainly won't go wrong with that. Mark says, I've taken my second step to DJing and bought a Traktor S2. Should I install the software on an external drive? No, keep everything on an internal drive. You shouldn't, if you've got a modern laptop with a reasonable size drive, you should have plenty of room for your software and your music. Just keeps it simpler. Don't use an external drive unless you've got good reason to. I mean, you can do it, but don't start out that way. There's no Nothing to be gained starting out that way. Nine shocks. No, we haven't got any news on the what we thought was a Denon slave player that we spotted. 
on Den and, uh, on a layback loop live stream the other week, uh, a piece of equipment that none of us have seen before. Let's have a look at the news. Let's see what's going on out and about in the DJ world at the moment. Um, so we've got on digital DJ tips, we've got how important is it to mix in key, to mix in key. So this is diving into what we were talking about earlier. This was just published today. Uh, so if you're interested in mixing in key, whether you should do it if you think you're doing it too much or whatever, come and have a look at that article there and you get some uh, some ideas about the kind of the bigger picture with mixing in key. There's news that Mixcloud now archives your live streams. So if you're live streaming on Mixcloud, it keeps them. It's not all good news though, because it only keeps the audio, not the video. But Mixcloud is a fully legal way to live stream. So definitely worth having a look at if you want somewhere where your live streams will stay up. And we had a little tutorial article on, would you believe it, there is a right and a wrong way to turn DJ gear on and off. And we covered that this week. We've been a little bit quiet on digital DJ tips this week for obvious reasons, because the whole team, well, a lot of the team are here uh, filming uh, away from the studios this week. Uh, but the big news, of course, last week was this, the launch of the CDJ 3000 media player from Pioneer DJ. So you can go and read our thoughts on that and our review uh, over on Digital DJ Tips as well. So there's our regular look at what's going on in the DJ world to kind of break things up here. Let's get back to your questions then. Uh, this next question is from Martin Moore who says, I'm using my NDX 500, which is a budget CD player from Newmark. I wanna get a second 500 and a mixer. What mixer is probably best to use? Should I get a MIDI controller to use for samples and hot cues? It depends what you're using your CD players with. If you're using them plugged into DJ software, it might be a good idea to do that. You might look at a DJ mixer that's already got some kind of MIDI control on it. So the um, if you're using Traktor, for instance, the Traktor Control Z2, it's got a lot of buttons and knobs on it that you can use. Um, even something little like the Newmark Scratch two-channel controller has got a little bit of MIDI control on it. Uh, or you could get a little box to control the extra bits and pieces as well. So it just depends what you're using it for, Martin. Martin's over there on Facebook. So if anyone's got any more advice from Martin with a mixer to go with his NDX 500s, uh, and I'm presuming Martin is using software because he does want to know about MIDI controllers as well. That would be great. Uh, hello, DJ99. Always good to have you here, my friend. Rob says, as a long-term Traktor user who recently invested in a Control S3, do you think I should be worried about Traktor being sold off possibly to Allen and Heath? No, I don't think you should. Traktor will carry on. The gear will carry on working. I don't think you should be worried about that. If anything, it'll be good news for you, anything that's going on there. Paul says, what do you think about the CDJs now being released when there's no gigs and people are struggling for money at the moment? Well, it's a long-term plan. Pioneer DJs plan for those CDJs to sell for at least the next half decade. So just like all of us, they'll be hoping that we can get back to normal sometime soon uh, and carrying on with the, the kind of schedule for releasing. But yeah, on the face of it, releasing a $2,000 pro media player when there's no clubs open, certainly not the best timing in the world, is it? Uh, Nathan K30 says, finally, after four to five months, I've been told my XDJ XZ or XZ is going to be getting delivered next week. What's the best thing to do first on it? I'll tell you the best thing to do first on it, Nathan, uh, is to head over to your browser uh, and type in YouTube XDJ XZ training or video tutorial. And what you will find there is this video from us where I spend probably an hour and a half, two hours, two hours 14, talking you through absolutely every part of the controller or the DJ system that you just bought. So by the end of this, you'll be, you'll know more than nearly everyone who owns this unit about how to use it. It's a really awesome resource and it saves you having to trawl through the instruction manual to get all this information because who wants to do that, eh? By the end of this watch, Set up your controller, watch it with me, and you will get everything you need to know about how to use your XDJ XZ or XZ. Won't turn you into a DJ because of course there's a lot more about being a great DJ than just how to use the gear, but it will certainly make sure that you're up to speed on that piece of equipment. So that is my advice as to what you should do first on that kit. Scott says, is there a way to live stream your DJ sets, uh, like showing your virtual DJ if uh, you can't get on cam? Well, actually, virtual DJ has got live streaming built into it, so you don't need to use any external software or anything. So go take a look at that. And if anyone's done that and wants to help Scott, Scott is over on YouTube. So Paul says, hey, Phil, excellent as ever. Well, you're very welcome, Paul. Jerry, is Digital DJ Lab Pro 
free for 30 days and can we cancel before we get charged? Thank you. So what Jerry is talking about is right now, literally today only, um, our Digital DJ Lab Pro membership program for DJs is uh, it's, it's $1. Uh, you can get it's thousands and thousands of dollars worth of our best training. We've got mixed deconstructions from big names like Carl Cox and James Hype and uh, and um, Roger Sanchez and you know uh, Armin van 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 Helden uh, Buren actually we haven't got a van Helden yet have we Steve? No, no he's coming. Um, so if you want to learn how these guys do their best mixes, we deconstruct them all in Digital DJ Lab. We also have what we call action plans, which are like mini courses that really deep dive into functions like advanced key mixing or how to use your sampler or what to do when you first play in a club, all that kind of thing. The stuff that moves beyond our courses. So this is all in a subscription program, which is uh, we open it uh, a couple of times a year and let people come and have a look. Uh, and that's what we're doing today. So if you want to have a look at that, it's a dollar for a month. Uh, and yes, you don't. If you don't like it, you just cancel. Uh, and you know, we've all done these things. Set a reminder in your calendar for a couple of days before the end of the of the 30 day period, uh, and just let us know, and we'll cancel it for you. We think you'll love it, and we, we're so sure you'll love it that we want you to try it for a dollar. So head over to digitaldjtips.com, click on any of the adverts that are there for Digital DJ Lab. If you want to get three and a half thousand dollars worth of DJ training for a whole month for nothing or for a dollar. Uh, so yes, it is free for 30 days or a dollar for 30 days. And then you can cancel before you get charged to answer that question for you, uh, Jerry. Uh, Andy, I'm afraid my, uh, I'm afraid my uh, French doesn't run to that. And it really should. Uh, but I apologize for that. If it's in Spanish, I'd have given it a go. Um, do you see any future for album tracks in a DJ collection? Most digital DJs seem to work from singles. No, get them out. If you want to play a track, have it in your collection. If you don't, don't have it in your collection. Uh, albums have no place in a DJ collection. Um, so someone over on Digi on our um, Facebook group, I just got a green screen for my video recordings. Where would I find images or video to run behind me on the green screen? Anywhere. Try Google Images to start with. Um, there's no secret to this. Just find a picture you like uh, and stick it behind you. Now, copyright notwithstanding, you can do that. If you want to buy professional images, someone like Shutterstock uh, will sell you a professional images image. Or there's a thing in Google Images where you can tick what's called Creative Comment uh, Commons, which will give you images that you won't get in trouble for using. So in Facebook Images, look for that. So Ronald uses a Ableton Link to link Machina and Tractor. So there's an example of doing that. Um, I'm using the new Virtual DJ 2021, says Sal Jaffa 786. I can't figure out figure out what's the best tutorial for using stems. Good question. Maybe we should make one. Thank you for the tip there. Just get on with it. Experiment. Record what you're doing uh, and see what happens. Cookie says, do you think the UK DJ scene will be back to some normality before December? What do we reckon in the room? No. No, I'm afraid not. I think it's going to be sometime late next year, personally. Get used to it. One of the biggest pieces of advice we can give you as a DJ missing your gigs is stop missing your gigs. Start thinking what you're going to do in the meantime because you'll be wishing your life away otherwise. Try and find stuff to do that is not gigging, uh, that brings you satisfaction. Get into producing, get into live streaming, uh, but don't think gigs are going to come back soon because we don't think they are. Uh, and that's the truth of it. So Jam Master A, I want to get the Denon players, but I've seen DJs complaining about their reliability, many complaining of hardware failure, and Pioneer DJs out of reach with their new players. So what do I do? Make sure you've got a good guarantee on the Denon players, and if they break, send them back. Uh, you know, they, they're they pretty reliable. I have heard one or two people with issues, but often it's the testers who've got the pre-production models. I'd say that you, you're going to be all right with, with the Denon players. Uh, or you could buy lower down Pioneer players, right? But you don't have to buy the new 3000s. They've got a lot of cheaper gear as well. Uh, but I think you'll be all right. Just make sure you've got a rock solid guarantee on them and make sure that getting them back to be fixed if they need to be fixed isn't hard. I like don't order them from an internet retailer because you save $50 when it's in, you know, another country or something because you've got to think about what you're going to do if they break down. It's where local shops, of course, win out. Uh, are there any preferred, preferred CD rippers that you guys use following the removal of CDDB from Audio Grabber? No idea. If anyone still rips CDs, Brian is over on Facebook. Go help Brian out. I'm going to do one or two more because we have to get back to the studio to carry on what we are filming here today. So sorry it's a bit shorter than normal. DJ99 says, as a DJ who's never played out, 
Would it be wise to take a 45 minute weekly gig to a maximum of 20 people in an outdoor coffee shop for free? Yes, it would. Make sure you get expenses, which means coffee, a cake, uh, you know, uh, make sure you get something for it. And what I would say is, you know, let me do it for you for two or three gigs. And if you like it, my fee is an insert a fee there. So if it's a coffee shop, you know, if you like it, my fee will be $25 for two hours, uh, assuming you're in America. And, you know, that way they know that you're serious about earning something from it. Uh, but you realize it's just a coffee shop and people are probably going to come anyway. And it gives you a chance to get to know them, to prove how good you are and get paid something in the end. So that's the kind of, I'll do it for free for now, but name when you want to start getting paid. And then you have that conversation then. Uh, but if you're happy to do it for just expenses and it is your first gig, hey, do it. But the trouble is we don't want you to pin yourself into a corner where you're doing everything for free because you'll get good quickly. The best way to learn is to do gigs, even small ones. So uh, Kevin says, have you heard of PlayDJ.tv? It's a stream service, especially for DJs. We have. We it, It's not impressed us when we've looked at it recently. Uh, we will keep looking and one that we think there's something we want to share with our audience, we will. Uh, I've got the Denon SC5000, says Kevin. I love mine. Uh, they're well professional, more than good enough to go in any club, and I have no issues with mine. Try them out yourself. You won't be disappointed. There you go. So there's a Denon piece of information there. Uh, big thumbs up for Denon. Uh, Dan V, or Dan, Dan, yeah, sorry, Dan, did his first gigs within the last three weeks. I felt very sad as the other DJs did far way better than me. They mix in with scratching and smooth transitions and much more. Dude, be kind on yourself. It's your first gigs. Play 100 gigs like that and then start comparing yourself to other people and still be kind on yourself then. Look, you got out there. Most people on these calls have never done that. Pat yourself on the back, Dan. Get up and do more. Um, remember, DJing is all about the music you pick and the order you play it in and what you're like behind the decks. That stuff doesn't take skill. It takes passion for the music and preparation and then just turning up and being the life and soul of the party. Scratching, don't say it in front of Steve, but it annoys most people most of the time. Don't worry about it, mate. You're doing fine. Uh, so um, DJ Pepper says, when Phil says WAV, I hear I hear WAP. Well, there we go then. Not much you can say to that, is there? Uh, Daryl says, I've had the, well, apart from WAP, yeah, I've had the DDJ1000 for two weeks and it's absolutely amazing. Well, there we go then. A vote for the DDJ1000 there. Last three questions. Nick, greetings from Barbados. If I have Serato Pro unlocked via hardware and my friend has done the same, but we use different hardware, can I use his hardware using my Serato Pro? Yes, I think you can. I think you can. Because when you plug the hardware in, it unlocks any copy of Serato. The copy of Serato isn't specific to you. Second of our final three questions is from uh, someone on our Facebook page. I subscribe to Digital DJ Lab. Are there any Rain 70 or 12 tutorials? No, we don't do gear tutorials in there. It's all skills. Uh, and more universal stuff than that. You, you'll find stuff potentially on that gear, but that's not what the um, the lab is about. Uh, and final question uh, is from, this isn't really a question, but it's the same topic. So I'll just answer this and then I'll get a final question. Phil says, uh, I'd love to do um, the courses you do. Is there a subscription process? I heard about the DJ Lab, is that the same thing? No, our courses are completely separate from Digital DJ Lab. Our courses teach you either to get going in DJing or to get to a decent level in DJing or producing or scratching or mobile DJing, uh, and then they stop. Digital DJ Lab takes up from there and, and stays with you in the months and years ahead, giving you all the stuff to keep you on top of your game. Lab is subscription. It's a dollar a month right now if you apply today, and then you pay the full price after that. Our courses, we don't have any subscription on any of our courses. You, you buy it outright. So that's the difference between the two. Right, now the last actual question. Uh, this one is from, I'm going to go to the, uh, I'm going to go to a slightly different place. So I've caught some people who maybe joined us late. Uh, this is, you're going to have to bear with me because I'm just trying to end on a, a really good one. Uh, just a comment and then we'll have a question. DJ Ann, we've got six to seven EDM festivals scheduled in September and October in our country, but gigs are only just coming back. Uh, well, there we go. Now, listen, guys and girls, help each other out with these questions in the comments underneath on Facebook and YouTube. Let's want to get a question or two from Mixcloud because we forgot Mixcloud. We always do because they don't come through to the same place. So 
DJLV2D on Mixcloud says, NI have launched a Machina Plus, a standalone production system. They obviously have the technology. Will there ever be a standalone tractor control SX, uh, SX Plus or something? No idea, but yes, they do have the technology. It looks more likely now than it did before, doesn't it? Stevie, don't be playing head-banging music in that coffee shop. Maybe play lounge and chill music, depending on the time and day and the place. Uh, so thank you for that advice there, Stevie. Uh, and finally, uh, will Newmark come out with the NS6 III? No idea, uh, Andre. Uh, uh, Aaron, uh, no, sorry, Silvio says, Phil's always in a hurry to go. Oh, Silvio, it's not true. Uh, but we do have to pack up now. The bags are packed and they're all looking at me like this. We're heading back into the studio for another long filming session today. Uh, so I'll see you all again very soon. Thanks for joining us. Sorry we're not in the usual studio with all the usual stuff around us. But I hope you found this useful anyway. Uh, on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, uh, our Facebook group as well. And thank you for joining us on Mixcloud. Slowly but surely building an audience there on Mixcloud. Uh, get good, guys and girls. Get out there. Make the moments. And we'll see you very soon.